Hey traders and poke parents, it's Poke Dad here, and today on Let's Play Pokemon, we're going to go over some deck building basics. So if you're liking this kind of Pokemon content, please subscribe, leave a like, and uh, let's move on, and let's jump into Pokemon. You have to have Pokemon in your deck, so let's kind of skim over real quick. We're not going to cover all these, I just highlighted kind of the main ones right now. And you're going to need at least two to four of your main attacking Pokemon. These are going to be what your deck overall strategy is going to be. So if you're playing Buzzwall, you're going to play cards built around him because he's your main focus of your deck. Same with Gardevoir, Empoleon, or Dustmane, even Bulu. So you find out which main attackers you want in your deck and then you're going to build around them. And like I said, most of the time you're going to have between two and four main attackers. Most of the time you're going to have probably three. Three is just a really good number. Um, it, it just in case one's prized, you still have two. Uh, sometimes if you have four main attackers, it gets clunky. They get in the way because late game you're not needing to put down another main attacker because... If you do, they can easily guzma it up and it gets stuck. Maybe you don't have an energy or a way to retreat and whatnot. So three overall is the perfect number in most decks. So let's move on to support Pokemon. Like I said, we're going to go over these fairly quickly. We're not going to spend too much time on any one card. So support Pokemon. As you can see, there's quite a few options here. Um, you have... You're, when you hear support Pokemon, you immediately think, you know, cards that help you draw or whatever. So, like your Rangaroo with the Instructability lets you draw, or the Octillery that lets you draw until you have five once per turn. These are really, really important support Pokemon, but there's also others, like, that are more deck-specific, like Vikavolt, that lets you search out a Grass or Electric once per turn and attach it to any Pokemon on your bench or in the active any way you like. So or the the Diancy. You're gonna see this in Gardevoir decks that lets you uh, evolve one of your Pokemon with its attack sparkling wish. So you're gonna have different forms of uh, support Pokemon. Some are gonna give power boosts. They're gonna let your Pokemon do 30 more damage. Or like Regirock that's gonna let your fighting Pokemon do 10 more damage. You just have these different forms of uh, support Pokemon. And you're going to use these support Pokemon to help your overall strategy. So if you're playing a uh, Buzzwall deck, you're going to want to support Pokemon of Regirock uh, and a way to draw more cards with either Rangaroo or Artillery. Or maybe you're playing something like uh, Dustmane where you need to accelerate energy. Then you'd play like Magnezone as often as you like, attach metal energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon. So these are just going to help your overall strategy. And there's others that help multiple strategies, like the Donwings. His ability Invasion, once during your turn, if this Pokemon is on your bench, you may switch it with your active. So he fits into a lot of different decks that's going to uh, help s switch and keep you... Uh, what Pokemon you want in the active so nothing really gets hung up or stuck there. Then you have other forms of support Pokemon like Garbodor that has the Garbotoxin ability that shuts off all abilities in play, in discard, and in hand. So he's a different form of support but again he's gonna help whatever your overall strategy is. And with these Pokemon you can't just uh, mash them together like a salad and expect it to to work. You have to have a coherent strategy with your main attacking Pokemon and that determines which supporting Pokemon you need. There's other like the a disru disruption Pokemon that doesn't allow Break to have any abilities. So like uh, you would play this to counter Greninja or Trevenant Break stuff like that. Yeah, barbacle that if you have a stadium, your opponent can't play special energy. 
So, I mean, there's more detailed, specific uh, support Pokemon, or there's uh, support Pokemon that overall help multiple decks, like the Orangaroo, the Octillery, and Vulpix. That's another one that helps a lot of different decks. Let you search for two Pokemon, reveal them, put them in your hand. So, there's different forms of support. You just have to figure out what your main strategy of your deck is, and then you'll fit these support Pokemon around that strategy. And like I said, not every Pokemon on this list goes with that uh, priority strategy of whatever your main attacking Pokemon is. So you'll have to kind of figure that out, or you can always message me in the comments, hey, I want to play this Pokemon, what support Pokemon should I use? And I am more than willing to help out any way I can. So let's move on to multi-purpose Pokemon. <clears throat> now these fill a role similar to the support Pokemon, but they also serve as like they could be an attacker. So like uh, one that used to be really popular is Drampa. You know, he's a support. Maybe your opponent's playing just a ton of special energy. So you can just use his first attack to discard the energy off their Pokemon. Or you can use this Big Wheel GX to, if your hand is not very good, you can shuffle it and then draw 10 cards. So you have different, you have, uh, then you have like energy acceleration Pokemon that, like Evil Tall, you can attach a dark energy from your discard pile to one of your bench. So you have energy acceleration Pokemon, like Volcanion, same thing here, energy acceleration, Registeel, energy acceleration. So you have different forms of, uh, they can attack as well as perform a function to help, once again, your overall strategy. While they're not your main attacker, they help your overall strategy. So like Gallade, you're going to see him in a lot of Gardevoir decks and you can look at the top five cards and put them back in any order. That's a, that is a ridiculously good ability and that's the reason why you'll see uh, her in a lot of different uh, Gardevoir decks, Zorark decks and such. So then you have like Turtonator. He is a perfect example of you can attach three and use his big attack, or you could use him as more of a support role and use his GX attack and attach five fire from your inner, uh, from your discard pile to any Pokemon that you'd like in any way. So these multi-purpose Pokemon serve many, many functions. Um, Lele is your ultimate multi-purpose. Him and uh, Zorark. Uh, with the Wonder Tag ability letting you grab any supporter out of your deck, plus it's a decent attacker in a lot of decks. So there's a reason why almost every deck runs at least one, if not two or three Lele. It's the ultimate consistency card, It's and it's multi-purpose, it can attack. It's just really, really good. It's it It goes into almost every deck, like I said. Same with uh, Zork. You have the regular Zork stand in with its ability, plus it has a really good attack. So you can build a deck around his ability and his attack. Same with like his his big brother, Zork GX. You can uh, use him for his ability with his consistency, or you can go in with his attack, which is decent and. Uh, He's like the ultimate consistency card. Between him and Lele, it's hard to argue which one's better than the other. They both are super good. Uh, also, another one, Lycanroc. You can use him exclusively for his ability, or you can attack. He's a good attacker. This Dangerous Rogue GX is probably the best GX attack. It might as well just say, take two prizes, because that's basically what it does. So... There's a lot of good uh, supporting slash multi-purpose Pokemon. And there's also what's kind of called techs. I would put tech cards under the uh, multi-purpose Pokemon because they fit into some decks to counter other decks. 
and that being like Mew, because you're wanting to hit for uh, Psychic Weakness on some of the more popular Pokemon. Same with like the Mew EX, the Mewtwo, and the Oracoro. So they form, they uh, perform a special function in that they're able to counter what your opponent's strategy is. So multi-purpose Pokemon, some accelerate energy, some have special attacks, some hit for weakness, some have special abilities, some you just want to use like their GX attack to accelerate energy or get a new hand, or maybe you just want to keep them on the bench and just use their ability like Gallade, you know, or he can go in as a really good attacker. So those are the multi-purpose Pokemons. Now let's go to consistency cards. And there's not very many. Uh, Orangaroo, these are uh, like a, the Orangaroo and Octillery are more like, uh, let's say you've got one prize left to take, and so your opponent plays in, so you shuffle your hand, and you only draw one card, right? So Orangaroo is going to let you draw more cards, same with Octillery. So they just kind of boost that consistency that you won't get a dead hand, especially late game. There's nothing worse than getting in and you know that you had the winning card in your hand, you got in, and now you're just top decking whatever's, uh, and, and you just can't get there to win to get that last prize or something. Maybe your opponent comes back and wins. Rangaroo and Octillery try to help solve that problem as much as possible. Oh, yeah, we already talked about Zorark and Lele, they're the ultimate consistency card. Uh, energy Lotto, maybe uh, you're struggling to find a special energy or a basic, so it's going to help you do that and make your deck overall more consistent. Same with Eva Soda, if you want to quickly evolve uh, to help out your overall strategy, definitely good. Heavy Ball, maybe your uh, Pokemon has three retreat costs, and so it's going to help grab that three retreat cost or higher Pokemon, put it straight in your hand. Nest Ball, it's going to help you get uh, basics on the bench because maybe you don't have Lele and use this card Bridget. If you don't have Lele's and Bridget's, then you're going to use Nest Ball. It performs the same function. It's just you have to build your deck a little bit different to uh, compensate for no Lele, no Bridget. So Nest Ball definitely needed if you don't have Lele because if you, if you have Lele, then you're going to probably run Bridget rather than Nest Ball. Some decks still run Nest Ball, but overall. Puzzle, super good. I grab any two cards out of your discard if you play two puzzles at once. I mean, not much more to say on that. It's really good. Ultra Ball, 99% of the decks are going to have four of these. Uh, just grabbing any Pokemon you need or want is just super good in this game. Brooklet Hill, <clears throat> Not every deck is going to run this, but if you're running a water or a fighting deck, this is going to be super helpful to help your overall strategy because you can just grab whatever Pokemon, water, or fighting you need and put it straight on the bench. Uh, Mallow. In certain types of decks, this is uh, just as good as Zark and uh, Tapu Lele. You can grab any two cards. There's a card in Expanded called Computer Search, and this is essentially two computer searches and so you you grab any two cards like say a, a rare candy and a Gardevoir and then you immediately evolve so Mallow's really really good in certain decks Pokemon Fan Club this isn't seeing a lot of play right now but if uh, Bridget gets rotated out then this card could see more play grab any two basic Pokemon put them into your hand Skyla ultimate consistency card, grab any trainer card and put it in your hand. The problem with her is she's a little slower. Let's say you don't have a draw supporter and so you have to Skyla to get a draw supporter and then the next turn you can play your draw supporter. So she's a little slow but if you're using her to grab a heavy ball, nest ball, ultra ball or another puzzle or something like that, she's really really good. So that's the consistency booster cards. I'm sure there's more but I've probably forgot them. Draw cards. You have to be able to draw cards and these are the four main ways. Cynthia, shuffle and draw six. Lily, 
draw till you have six, unless it's your first turn, then you draw eight. In, shuffle, and then each player draws the number of, uh, equal to the number of prize cards they have remaining. And then Sycamore, dump your head, hand, draw seven. So, those are really the main four draws. There's other draws, but you're gonna you're gonna use some variation of these four in every single deck. So not much to say on draw. Let's go to support trainers. Now these support trainers perform a little bit different function. And they help same like support Pokemon, they help your overall strategy. So you have Aqua Patch. Field Blower, Max Elixir, Letter, Rare Candy, Stretcher, Special Charge, Super Rod, Parallel City, Acerol, Guzma, Professor Kukui, Choice Band, Float Stone. Your main ones that you're going to need in every single deck is Choice Band, Float Stone, Field Blower, and probably Rescue Stretcher or Super Rod. So one or the other on those. The others, and you're going to definitely run at least two Guzmas if you're playing Puzzles three or four if you're not playing puzzles because that's that's your best uh, this is probably your best supporting uh, trainer card that we have right now so your every deck's gonna run Guzma but those are the supporting like I said they they support your your overall strategy and goal so next we have energy which there's not a whole lot to touch on here different types. Uh, special note, your deck cannot play more than four special energy. They can only play a maximum of four of one kind of special energy. So you could only play four strong, four counter, four DC, four rainbow, four splash. And these are just the main ones that are seeing play. There's a lot of other special energies. These are just right now the main ones. Um, and yeah, and then as far as the basic energies, you can run as many basic energies as you want. I think like 59. <clears throat> you could run 59 and one Pokemon if you want to. You wouldn't, but I'm just saying. So that's not much to say on the energy. Just remember, only four special energy uh, in a deck of one kind. So just want to make that clear. It was kind of confusing when I first said it. Last is a skeleton. An example of a skeleton. This is a, a formula that if you're just starting out and you've got a young new trainer or you're a poke parent and you're trying to help your young trainer to uh, build a deck, this skeleton, just for right now, if, if even if you don't have the Orangaroo or the Octillery, okay, let's say you don't have Octillery, you don't have Orangaroo. Use this right here, this formula. The two field blower, two nest ball, one rescue stretcher, one super rod, four ultra ball, four Cynthia, four Guzma, four N, two sycamore, three choice band, three flow song. Plug that in and then build your deck around that. Build three main attacking Pokemon. Throw in some support Pokemon. Throw in your energy count and then if there's still room, then you add in small tech cards like the the Mew or the Mewtwo or the Mew EX, that sort of stuff. And if you do that, you're going to see success because if you have a really good core, then your deck overall is going to function fairly well. It's still going to dead draw from time to time, but overall, you're going to be able to perform your strategy that you want and but you can't just have like grass Pokemon with fire Pokemon with lightning Pokemon with water Pokemon and just mash them all together and expect it to work you have to have a cohesive main strategy and that's built around your main attacking Pokemon figure out your main attacking Pokemon plug this skeleton in with that main attacking Pokemon and then fit the pieces around it and don't just throw in like I said a whole bunch of different types of Pokemon because it's not gonna work 
folks. You have to have a coherent strategy. So that's all I got. And until next time, be excellent to each other.